In two previous videos, we have discussed sales pipelines in properties and also the sales pipeline in opportunities. Now we're going to tie those both together and talk about sales pipeline in terms of dashboards. In this video, we're going to talk about the list that you need for these key dashboards. We're also going to talk about sharing dashboards with current users. And then a different way of tracking activity both in properties and tracking activity in opportunities. Well, here we are in Aspire and the list that we need to remind you of that you've had from before are both in the properties. Let's go there first. And we've talked about these in a couple different situations before, but there's some examples whether you want to look at your sales pipeline for your entire branch. Uh, maybe you want to look something specific like a status of all your prospects or maybe one sales rep, maybe just Sally's prospects, for example. So these are your typical lists that you can have. And while we're here, let's talk about another thing about sharing these lists with other users. If I go into all prospects and I say, hey, this is prospects for our entire branch, but we want to share this, we can do a couple different things. First, we go back into our gear. In here, we simply go and filter one more thing, the account owner name. And instead of choosing a specific person, we're going to choose this option called current user. And then we're going to save it and it will show all the results for whoever the current user is. And in this example, maybe I am Sally, the account owner. And what I would do to share with everyone is I would go up to my disk and do a save as. And maybe I would call this one sales pipeline, my prospects. And I could share it with specific people in mind if I knew there's just a handful of people I need to share with. Or maybe I just want to share it with a role and say all account managers or whatever the role might be. And then everybody with that role in the company then will have a list that says sales pipeline, my prospects. And when you say that, everyone would be able to see their list that would just show them their prospects. Now let's quickly look over in opportunities. Similar to properties, we have created a bunch of lists before. So whether we're looking at specific contract pipelines, the entire branch, or just certain statuses like new opportunities, ones that we're bidding on, uh, and delivered opportunities. So similar to what we just discussed, if you wanted to look at it by a certain sales representative, you could do that. You could go in and go back to the gear. And you could go and remember, there's still account owner tied to the property, but now that we have an opportunity, there's also a sales rep. You might want to be filtering it by a sales rep name. And in this case, you do the same thing as before. Use a current user, go save this, and then share it with all the sales reps so that they have their current list of opportunities. Once you have a few of your key lists, you'll simply go out to your main page. And down here in the dashboard section, you'll start adding some dashboards. So right now I have no dashboards in there. I go to the green plus sign and in the element type, I would go to my select advanced search because I have a specific list I'm going to be using and looking at. Uh, so now in the search view, I can actually go find that. So again, we built everything in properties first. So you go down to properties and you can see here's some of the lists I built. So here's my sales pipeline for the entire branch. Here's all the prospects or just maybe Sally's prospects or the list that we just created with my prospects. So if I want to add the entire branch, I'll leave it as a record count to know how many of these I have in the system right now. Maybe I know my goal is 100 right now, and maybe I give myself a little range of 10%. Uh, I could share this again, just like we shared the list, so everyone has the same dashboard, whether it's with a specific user or with a specific role, just like we did before, and we save. And now I have a dashboard of my sales pipeline for the entire branch. I could click into this at any time and I could see the details of that, which is that same list that we created. Now I'm going to create a few more of our dashboards that we just talked about. I'm also going to go into my property list and look at all my prospects, not just my entire sales pipeline. I want to look at this specific status and maybe my goal is 75. And of course, when you have a few dashboards, maybe you decide you want to change the names a little bit. You can go back into the gear. You can go back into the pencil to edit. And you can change your actual display name of this. So maybe these are my maintenance pipeline count. And maybe this other one is all my prospects. And then I hit the gear again to save those. 
So I would do the same thing with opportunities. I would go and add. Same exact idea with selecting advanced search, but now I'm going to go down instead of properties, I'm going to go look at my opportunities. So again, I created a work order pipeline uh, or maybe the contract pipeline for new opportunities or bidding and so on. In opportunities, instead of using my maintenance contracts, let's look at work orders instead. So I created one for my work order pipeline for my entire branch. And I'm simply going to rename this one to my work order pipeline count. Now I want to show you something a little bit different of another way that you can track a dashboard. So I'm going to use this work order pipeline count. So this is our opportunities now. And I'm going to go in and add two more. So there's list that we created and we'll show you those in a second. But I'm going to go down to my advanced search and go find these opportunity lists that I made. So here's the first one I'm going to add. It's called last activities for last 30 days. So I just called it work order pipe activity for less than 30 days. And we're going to save this one. Then we're going to add one more. And this is one going to be for activity after today. So next activity that we're tracking. And for both of these, I'm not going to put any goal in there. But again, I'll rename this one as well. So here they are. Here's my total work order pipeline count. So the number of opportunities that I have in my, in my pipeline for work orders. And I have now my work order pipeline activity. So any activity that's gone on in the last 30 days and any activity that's going on after today that's scheduled. So the point here is you can quickly see of the 89 opportunities that are out there in our pipeline for work orders. We've only have seven activities, whether those are appointments or tasks that we've done in, in the last 30 days for those 89. And we only have five activities scheduled anytime after today. So if I'm a manager, this is really important to me. I want to see what activity is going on for my pipeline for both work orders or for my pipeline for my maintenance. And we can do the exact same thing for the maintenance and prospects. Uh, we can also do the same thing for our pipeline for maintenance in opportunities, not just work orders. So see how we did that. If I go back to my opportunity page, and we had built, here was our entire branch, our work order pipeline, the one we first used. So remember that is tracking all of our different statuses. So in our gear, we're seeing everything that we're bidding, delivered, new opportunities, and pending approval for our work orders. And we create these two new lists. So here's my last activities for the last 30 days. So all we did, if we go into our gear to take a look, is we kept those same two filters and we added this new filter for last activity date in the last 30 days. So I'm basically just trying to find out what we've done in those last 30 days. And again, remember, we're looking at our activities. We have those as display options so I can see what activities they're counting. There are those seven items that we just saw, and these look like all appointments. Then I go to my other list. I want to look at what activity is next, what's after today. So again, same thing, same list. If we go into the gear to take a look real quick, all I did is the next activity date after today is what we're using. So any activity that was created for after today. And there are those five items. So you can see the next activity. So anything that has something coming up and these are all tasks, it looks like there's no appointments. So if I go back to my main dashboard again, this makes sense. So there was the entire pipeline activity for work orders. And here we show the last activity in the last 30 days. There was only seven activities. And in the, anything after today, there was only five. So here's a great tool and a great opportunity for you to track your activity. And you could do the exact same thing. If we were in properties, I could do the same exact list. I could do my sales pipeline for last activity in the last 30 days. And I could look at my sales pipeline for next activity after today. Same exact filters and you could build those dashboards. So as a quick reminder, we looked today at the necessary lists we needed to create these dashboards. We talked briefly about sharing dashboards with the current user. So when you share the list, those users will just see the stuff tied to them, whether they're the account owner or the sales rep. We also looked at tracking activity in properties and tracking activity in opportunities. So we can see all the activity 
that's going on with our maintenance pipeline or all the activities going on with our work order pipeline in opportunities. Thank you for your time listening to this presentation on the sales pipeline dashboards.